would simply run out for Richard Burns and Colin McRae. If they are to stay alive in the World Rally Championship, they must act now. A win by Marcus Gronholm here in New Zealand clinches the title. Game over. But should he be beaten, the battle goes on. New Zealand is a driver's rally. It's fast, so drivers push hard. And when things go wrong, it's big. Three men will need to win here. Only one will. You are about to see drives of courage, drives of anger, drives of desperation. This is what Maximum Attack is all about, and it starts now. New Zealand, the country that invented extreme sports, but adding to the bungee jumping, jet boating, and the rest is the most extreme form of motorsport. New Zealand also plays host to round 12 of the World Rally Championship. Hello everybody, I'm John Roberts. The Rally New Zealand is the first of two visits by the WRC to the Pacific Rim. The rallies run in the very north of the North Island of New Zealand, and it's based in the city of Auckland, home to around a third of the country's population. 26 stages, all on gravel, make up the three days. All eyes are on Finland's Marcus Gronholm this weekend. The Peugeot drivers won three times already this season, and another victory here in New Zealand will give him the title. It's a good rally for me, I think. We we'll see how it starts. I am first on the road the first day, so not maximum, but uh, yeah, we we'll see. Only two men can now stop Gronholm, the reigning world champion Richard Burns and the 1995 title holder Colin McRae. Last year's Rally New Zealand saw Burns win for Subaru, going on to win that title, but he knows that hanging on will be tough. If he doesn't sew it up, he'll be another step closer because he's fast here as well. Colin McRae's won here no fewer than three times, so New Zealand has a special place in his heart. He's out to win yet again this weekend, and now that it's been announced he's moving from Ford to Citron next season, there are a few distractions. It would be great to win at least two of the remaining three rallies this year with Ford, and then obviously concentrate on next year. The loose gravel, though, may penalize those drivers running at the head of the field, so there will be a few surprises. Expect the three Hyundai Accents to be on charge. And while Mitsubishi have called up Yanni Posenin to replace the injured Alistair McRae. The guy said it well and things and everything works. It's really, you enjoy the driving here. It's not, that is quite nice, actually. Skoda 2 are quietly confident. Kenneth Erickson won here in 97. It's fast, it's flowing, it's small hills up and down, twisted. It has everything, you know. I think all, all drivers love this rally. Carlos Sainz would agree with that. He's won here four times. You don't have to worry about holes or about the stones or, uh, you know, it's not, not hard on the car, so it's, it's just driving. But the shakedown test the day before the start saw Sainz make a rare mistake. As many others have shown over the years, New Zealand may be high on the list of drivers' favorite events, but it can bite. The championship contenders will be aiming to avoid repeating those mistakes. If Ronald, Burns, and McRae all retire, then the Finn still wins the title. There's no such pressure on ninth place Tommy McAdden, but a win this weekend will restore some of the pride after a string of retirements. In the series for manufacturers, just three points will be enough to guarantee a third successive title for Peugeot. Thursday night in the ceremonial start in the center of Auckland. Petter Solberg faces the traditional Maori challenge, but knows the 26 stages will be far more fearsome than this. Day one witnesses the first eight of those stages with the opening six run to the south of Auckland. So what's the key to tackling the gravel here? 
This is a typical piece of road that we are rallying on here in New Zealand. The special thing is the camber. It sort of slopes off to the side, as you can see here. And uh, another thing is also for me as a co-driver to be very precise when you read the pace notes because you need to keep the rhythm. Everything flowing when you have changes of camber all the time. Another special thing in New Zealand are the crests. You come up from this side, it's totally blind, you have to set the car before you come into this corner. And you can see the bank on the inside. If you don't have the right line there, it's so easy to hit it and you just flip over. So there you have it. With Marcus Gronholm starting first today, he'll sweep the road for those behind him. Is that the advantage Colin McRae and Richard Burns need to attack? Day one starts next. Welcome back to day one of the Rally New Zealand. Here the virtual spectator overview of the first stage gives us a great picture of the kind of countryside through which this event runs. But what's more difficult to see are the switchback camber changes of the road surface and all the loose gravel. Will that be as much of a handicap as many feared? Marcus Gronholm certainly hopes not. As championship leader, he's first into the stage and so the first to clear a path through the gravel for the others. Sure enough, a recent lack of rain meant the dry gravel is a problem with the Peugeot driver reporting slippery conditions throughout the stage. Have a listen as the car slides its way through the stage. Vasenlaita oikein opee. Vaseri jouhe, toista vaseri jouhe yli nyppy viis. Vaseri ehkä lyhyt, seitsemän vasen täys, sata viiskymmentä. Nyppy täys, sata. Oikein eri miinus ahdas. To break down the championship picture, Roland needs to score seven points from a possible 30 on the final three rounds. A win here clinches it, a lower finish, then it depends on where Richard Burns finishes. He says should he win the championship, nothing will compare to his first title victory in 2000. Ja vasen pitkä eri yli nypyn neljä. Ja vasen hidas sumppuun. Oikee eri sisältä. Kaheksa ja huomio nyt oikee hidas sumppuun. Vasen hidas kivi sisällä. Oikee hidas. Seitsemän ja oikee nopee sumppu. Vasen eri. Viis. Vasen eri sisältä. Yhdeksä, oikein pitkäri, miinus ahdas. Sata. Ja vasen täys. Ja silta vaseri helppo. 120. Ja vasen täys, täys yli nypyn. Sata. Ja vasen täys yli nypyn. Ja oikein piru pitkä eri, kirraa, ehkä pyöreä, kirraa vähän lopussa. Vaseri jouheen. Kaheksa. Okay, the question at hand is how much time will Gronholm lose running first? Next into the stage is the number one Peugeot. Richard Burns, though, is well aware that that number one on his door might only be his for just three more rallies, and so he and co-driver Robert Reed attack. Reed, however, is suffering from the flu, and Burns says he still hasn't shaken off his jet lag from the long flight. Running second, they should, at least, better Gronholm's time. Have a look at how Burns handles the car as we ride on board. Easy right plus in. And flat right, 40. Easy left plus, don't cut long, 40. Easy right to minus in, 50. Fast left plus, tight into maybe long, opens. Fast right, plus 10, fast right, long, long, opens, 40, fast left, tightens at maybe 20, 
flat right there, fast left, long 70. Slow to right and to right minus. Long 40. Fast left, long 20. Flat right 60. Easy left cut 20. Flat right cut 50. Flat left, flat left 60. Crest 60. Right to max 70. Crest to easy right 10. Fast right plus long 30. Feature left plus tightens to slight right 100 flat right minus to flat right minus in 60 flat right cut 100 fast left plus 10 fast left big cut long 50 crest 50 long crest to flat right minus cut 70 long crest 30 easy left minus and cut 50 fast right plus and fast right in 30 fast left minus long 10 fast left in 20 flat right 120 crest 70 flat left tightens and flat left cut 100 50 flat right long 70 flat right plus in long 50 flat left tightens cut flat left cut Opens 80, flat left, tightens baby to flat left 60, flat right to minus, tightens long. The pair did better Gronholm's time and they're nearly 10 <laughs> seconds faster. <coughs> Harry Roventera drives the number three Peugeot on gravel events while Gilles Panizzi uses the car on tarmac. With New Zealand frequently being compared with Finland, it's no surprise that the Finn is immediately on the pace. Peugeot needs to score just four points to wrap up the manufacturer's title this weekend. And while the team has drivers who are capable of winning the gravel event, they insist nothing can be taken for granted, especially after the hydraulic problems Marcus Gronholm and Rovan Perra had the last two events. Pasen Paro nyt oikein, keskelle vaseri miinus sidos seiska. Pitkä oikein nopee pitää seiska. Hain puut, vasen täys sisältä seiska. Pitkä oikein täys 150. Pitkä vasen täys kirraa eriks yli sisältä. Ja pitkä pitkä oikein helppo kirraa vähän. Second fastest, Robin Perra shows that the road is clearing, so Colin McRae and co-driver Nicky Grist should be quicker still. Surprisingly though, McRae is 15 seconds slower than Burns and nearly six down to Gronholm. It's hardly the start he'd wanted or needed. 30, to five minus. 70, turn two right minus Titans. And six left, into six right, and left Titans to three. Right over McRae's teammate Carlos Sainz is experimenting with a new launch control system this weekend, and you can be sure that that stall will be followed by a return to the old system at the next service. Lots more to come. Stick around.
With the Peugeots currently first, second, and third, the Subaru duo, Petter Solberg and Tommy Mackinnon are determined to make the most of the New Zealand conditions and their road positions. Solberg and his co-driver, Phil Mills, would be only seventh fastest. Mackinnon and Kai Lindstrom, however, were nearly four seconds faster than their colleagues. Mitsubishi's last-minute stand-in, Yanni Kosinen, is delighted with his performance. Fifth quickest, slower than Makinen, but faster than both Solberg and McRae. Normally, Alistair McRae is in this car, the second Mitsubishi, but the team decided to rest the Scotsman and allow him time to recuperate from a bruised liver he got in a mountain bike accident. As a result of Alistair's withdrawal, Passanen gets his first ever run here in New Zealand. Mitsubishi has shown its faith in the Finn by giving him a drive on the season-ending Rally GB. That allows Passanen to string together three back-to-back -back outings in the Lancer WRC. Another Mackinnon in the making? Not everyone was pleased though. Kenneth Erickson and Tina Turner were only ninth quickest. The Skoda slowed by brake problems. On board now with Gilles Panizzi, the tarmac specialist, is competing this weekend in the 206 WRC test car. But after setting a couple of fastest stage times on this year's safari, Peugeot team boss Corrado Provera says Panizzi will be let loose here. He says he's confident Gilles is going to be very fast and spectacular on gravel. Panizzi could only manage 16th on the opening stage. So a slightly surprised Richard Burns heads the first leaderboard, while Robin Perra and Grunholm make it an all Peugeot top three. Mackinnon, Passanen, and McRae round off the top six, with Solberg heading the chasing pack, and the two Hyundais of Loix and Schwartz also within 30 seconds or so of the leader. So did the loose gravel have any real effect? Not according to the virtual spectator, Colin McRae and Tommy Mackinnon should have benefited from their road positions, but just look at the gap to Marcus Gronholm. If you need any further proof, we'll take a look further up the stage, a long way up the stage, in fact, where Richard Burns, running just one place behind Gronholm, is about to cross the finish line. It was not so easy to be first there, but uh, I was a bit surprised that uh, all the others, okay, Richard was fast, but not, not the others, so that, that I don't understand. It's been really, really good stage, that, that first one. I tried very hard because I, I know that I've got to get some time off Marcus today uh, when I can, because he's going to be very, very fast tomorrow. Okay, Barry. Why have you got that speed? Why are you going so quick? It's the first time here in New Zealand for you. I don't know. Maybe I, I drive slowly and carefully and, and maybe maybe some other, other people drive hard and, and that's why my time is very good. I, I come in very slow and carefully. Stage two in New Zealand is run within a few miles of the Raglan service park. This time, Marcus Gronholm would only be 10th fastest after hydraulic problems cost the Finn precious seconds. So Richard Burns had a golden opportunity to open up an advantage over his colleague. We'll follow Burns through the entire 4.3 mile stage. Your commentator is Robert Reed. Enjoy. To flat lane, to right back, 60 long cross, 60 K lane, 10 slow K lane. 80, flat right, so easy right, 40, fast left, in long, 40, left max, 30, fast right, plus long, 60, 
medium left, plus 20, medium left in 70, fast right to fast right 60, fast right, tightens long, 50 K left plus to K left, 50, fast left plus to flat left 50, flat left 80, fast right plus to fast right plus tightens maybe, 70, left max to left max, 70, flat right minus long, 40, long crest, 60, slight right, 120, long crest, 30, slight left, 70, crest to easy left, and easy left minus in, 30, flat right, tight maybe in, 30, flat right, long, 70, left max, 40, left max, 60 flat left long 30, medium right plus, tightens, 30, easy left plus long, 60, slight right, 30, flat left long, to crest 30, easy right tightens, to easy right long, 60, fast right, in, 50, easy left minus, to fast left plus, 100, left max 80 slight left over crest 60 flat left long 60 flat right to easy right plus 80 flat right minus to flat left 70 long crest breaking 20 flat left minus 30 fast right plus and tightens 20 fast left plus long to flat left 80 flat right 50 flat right plus to crest 70, easy right plus long 20, easy left minus 80, breaking, right max 40, K left plus and K left, 70, medium left plus 20, medium left, in long 20, easy right long 60, fast right minus times maybe, long 100, Slight left over long crest, 60 flat right plus 50, left max 70, fast left plus 10, fast left plus, times maybe 60, flat right to flat right 120, flat right plus 80, flat right tightens maybe 100, flat right 10, flat right tightens in 40, Left max 150, flat left 20, flat left 80 braking, flat left to crest, flat left minus 20, fast left plus and opens 20, flat left minus long 40, fast right and tightens maybe to flat left. And so it's stage win number two for Burns. But not everyone would have such a smooth run. Remember how Kenneth Erickson wasn't happy with the Skoda earlier? The mechanics changed the brake pads, but on the very first corner of stage two, those brakes failed, and so ended the Swedes' rally. So after two stages, here's how the top six stacked up. After a podium finish last time out, Petter Solberg's flying high. Will his nerves be solid back on gravel? Back in a flash. <laughs> New Zealand Stage 3 is another 10 miles of loose gravel through Te Papatapu. Again, Marcus Gronum and co-driver Timo Rautiainen would lose time on the stage. After their hydraulic problems on stage two, this time the pair were concerned about an oil leak which sprayed fluid into the car's windshield. Is there anything you can do to stop it leaking? I tried to put a towel with a tire wrap and it, uh, it seems to work, but I don't know why it's coming out yet. Richard Burns, of course, knew nothing of his teammate's problem and again flew through the stage. His determination to score his first win in a Peugeot is painfully clear to see. 60, slightly 30, easy right. 
right plus and easy right plus in. 50, flat play, long 40. Reach of right plus long. For his part, Harry Roven Perra is also on a mission and on exactly the same pace as Burns. Petter Solberg would be third fastest, the Subaru a little over four seconds slower than the two Peugeots, and now the best of the non-Peugeot drivers. Hyundai has high hopes here in New Zealand. Freddie Loic says this rally suits the accent well since there's not much heavy acceleration and heavy braking where the car is less strong. Loic believes the key here is about maintaining a good momentum and good rhythm. That spin cost the Hyundai driver about 10 seconds, but wound up dropping Lloyds from 9th to 10th. So the gap to the leader opens slightly, but behind, things are very stacked up. The year that he sort of broke onto the scene, he did Sweden rally in a, a private Ford Escort and finished eighth. And myself, like a lot of people, saying, who the hell is Marco Martin? So who is Marco Martin? For anybody who doesn't know, he's one of the hottest young prospects in World Rally. He first linked up with co-driver Michael Park in 2000 when driving a Toyota, making them one of the newest pairings in the WRC. Uh, I decided to go uh, with him because uh, he, he was still sort of young and they wanted to get uh, on top. If you go with some uh, really experienced co drivers, it's good. They have experience, but they have uh, been there, done that, so they are not that uh, keen to, to try the maximum. He knew where he wanted to go, and it wasn't a case of treading on people's toes to get there, but he made sure he did everything he could to get there. And he took quite a big risk in taking me because he went from his native pace notes to native co driver, which was easy, he went to English, which was completely difficult for him to start with, and it was quite a struggle. He took a big chance, and um, thankfully for me, it worked out. I would say that he's very, very calm. I mean, that's one of the things that, I, that does strike me about him. He doesn't get excited about anything, to be honest. In driving, you, you need to to concentrate on your job and uh, not to think about other stuff. It doesn't mean that I don't get upset. Maybe just the way I am, I don't show it, but uh, for sure there are times when I'm very upset. Even in Greece, when we were leading the rally, we were still absolutely so focused on the next stage time, not worrying about the end of it. And it's only when we had the puncture that, it, that, it, that I realized how much it meant to him, because that was the first time I've seen him absolutely gutted. For 
performances such as his charge to the top of the leaderboard in Greece this year have raised Marco to the status of superstar in his native Estonia. Earlier this year, he was even entrusted to take the Estonian Prime Minister, Sim Kallis, for a spin. It was good to have uh, somebody uh, that important in a car, and, and I think it was good for rally sport in Estonia to, to make it uh, sort of visible. Marco's popularity has also had some knock on effects for Michael. It was quite interesting in, in Finland where I, I, there were thousands and thousands of Estonians that they sort of adopted me in, as well, that they had the English flags on one cheek and the Estonian flag on the other and all of the, the flag bearers were, were carrying both sets of flags and all of the t-shirts had my name on as well so that was quite interesting and never sort of experienced something like that before. When we came out of the service area each time they were shouting my name as well as shouting Marco's which is surreal, I mean that doesn't normally happen which is very very bizarre. The duo signing to Ford this year has given them their first full WRC program together. Not only is it a full championship, which meant a lot to us, it's three years, which is fantastic because we can do what we want this year. We can learn a little bit, we can go fast, and we just know that we've got stability because next year we're, we're there already. We don't have to scratch around. This year I would be really happy if I can finish, uh, finish all the rallies. I mean, it's, it would be unbelievable, but uh, we, we, we will try our best. That means we have a really good pace to build some extra speed on it. And, uh, we'll, We'll try to raise our game quite quick next year. Coming up, stage four and a couple of surprises. Stick around, some intense action from New Zealand in just a minute. Stage four, Vonga Coast is one of world rallying's most picturesque tests. Run within sight of some of New Zealand's best surf beaches, the stage saw no repeat of Marcus Gronum's earlier problems, although he was again slower than both Burns and Rovin Para. Again fastest on the stage, the reigning world champion. The fourth successive stage victory for Richard Burns extends his lead to over 14 seconds. Yet again, it seems the predicted handicap of the loose gravel isn't an issue, and yet again, it seems that Peugeot are already running away with the rally. 206 is hold on all of the top three places, and even Lady Luck seems to be smiling on the French team. When Burns makes a slight error on this corner, he simply bounces off the bank and carries on. Harry Roven Para and co-driver Vito Cylinder were again second quickest, but watch the clock. It underlines the stunning pace Burns is setting. With Colin McRae and Nicky Griss needing a win to stay alive in the championship, they should have been scrapping with the Peugeots going into stage four, but instead they were down in sixth place. Their rally and their championship challenge, however, would take a dramatic turn when McRae misheard a pace note around one mile from the finish. And six left tight to the crest. And six right and six left opens into K2 right plus don't catch them. So see if I can get some help. Try and try as they might, the car wasn't going anywhere, and the silence from McRae was speaking a thousand volumes. Wait, let me go and get some help. Okay, Should I jump out? Wave the next car then. Steep downhill and fortunately slid straight on as you can see. Uh, we got st stuck in there, it was quite tough. We maneuvered it to where it was, but we've damaged the radiator and uh, water temperature went too high, so that was it. 
so Carlos Sainz and Luis Moya were left to uphold Ford honors. Peugeot's 1-2-3, though, meant that the manufacturer's title is as good as settled, with a spin for the Spaniards merely adding insult to injury. Stage four was probably the most incident packed of the day with Petter Solberg and Phil Mills lucky to escape joining McRae and Gris on an earlier flight home. The Subaru pair though, chose one of the more dramatic corners to make their mistake. Take off the response. Take off. Take off the fan. Typically, when you almost drive off a cliff, you're shaking fairly well. But for these guys, it's business as usual. To keep left of a crest, 15, one right tightens, minus gravel and slippy, 20. Short head in left, 30. Armin Schwartz also spun the Hyundai, the German possibly distracted by the sight of McRae's car nose down in the ditch. So the Peugeot domination continues with Burns leading from Rovenpera and Gronholm. Hassanen was now the best of the rest and McRae's retirement has elevated Solberg into the top six. Chasing the point scoring position are the two remaining Fords and all three of the Hyundais. You had said you were going to take this rally on and drive aggressively. Was it a bit too aggressive, do you think? No, not really, no. I mean, it, the times were, were, were reasonable. Okay, if you take Peugeot out of the equation, they were very good. But uh, and that was just one corner. It was a very slow corner. It wasn't, you know, we went as if we were right on the edge and trying too hard. We just got caught out in the braking and slid a bit straight on over the edge. It certainly wasn't the plan. You know, the plan was to have three good events and, you know, just have a good run and, and you know, leaving, leaving a good foot. So it's uh, not started off very well at the moment. Very disappointing end to a rally that you thought he could do well on. Yeah, I mean, it was starting to uh, come together, and I mean, uh, okay, we weren't at the head of the field, but certainly uh, the performance was getting even better. And um, yeah, big disappointment, really. Welcome back to day one of the World Rally Championship from New Zealand. Stage five is another run along the coast. As we've seen so many times this year, Hutter Solberg was determined to make up for his mistake on the previous test and storm through the stage. Tommy McAdam, though, was nearly three seconds slower than his teammate. Problems with the Impreza's turbo and brakes meant McAdam is once again a frustrated man. The road conditions finally started to favor those running further down the order. On board now with Marco Martin and co-driver Michael Park, the duo were third fastest, now over 16 seconds ahead of Carlos Sainz and Luis Moya in an identical car. Have a listen. 36 right to 5 left, and 5 minus right, 100, crest easy left, 44 plus right, Four plus left, long, long. Tight, it's to three, keep in. Four right, tight, it's to three, minus. Long, long, keep in. Seventy. Four minus left. And four plus right, long, long, keep in. Seventy. Flat left. One fifty, flat left. Forty, flat right, over crest. 40, 6 minus left, very long. 30, 5 minus right, keep in. 150, flat right, tightens to 4 plus. 20, 4 plus left. 100, 3 right long, keep in. 30, 6 left. 34 right, flat left, care, 30, crest and 3 minus left, long, long, 80, short, 5 left, tightens to 3, camber, 40, 
Midland right, 40, Crescent Lake, 3 minus right, slow, keep in. 50, 5 minus left, into 5 minus right. But the performance of the stage came from Yanni Posadin and Arto Kapanen. Both are tackling the Rally New Zealand for the first time, although you wouldn't know it from the way the two Finns flew through the seven miles. Just watch their time compared with Solberg's, the fastest so far. To their delight, they set the fastest time. It too is Mitsubishi's first stage win for the newest Lancer WRC. It wasn't all good news for the team though. Francois Delacour and Daniel Gradaloup were only 13th fastest. This slight error, one of a number of off-road excursions during the day. Have a look as he fights the car. So, Burns looks to be in control up front. And remember, if Brolum doesn't win and Burns does, the championship goes on. The last stage of the day is on deck. The day's last proper test before the rally heads for the Auckland Super Specials is stage six. After all his earlier frustrations, Marcus Grolum must have been hugely relieved to finally win a stage. Te Papatapu was the day's only stage to be run twice, so perhaps the loose gravel had been a factor after all. This time, Richard Burns would have to settle for second best, although the gap between the two Peugeots was just 2.4 seconds. To no one's surprise, it was Robin Perra who was third quickest, so yet again, it's an all Peugeot top three on the stage. Seventh quickest, Posnan couldn't repeat his stage five victory, but the Mitsubishi will still start day two as the best of the non-Peugeots. So with only the two super specials to run, this is how the leaderboard looks. Burns, Robin Perra, and Gronum occupy the podium positions, with Passanen, Mackinnon, and Solberg completing the top six. Marco Martin leads the chasing pack. There is, though, a long way to go. Richard, a lead of 17 seconds or more at the end of day one. That's not a bad tally at all. No, it's perfect. More than we could have hoped for today, I think. Um, we've we've got the two people probably you least want directly behind you on uh, on this rally with Harry and Harry and Marcus. But at least we're in the position we're in. We didn't expect to be here. Do you think you could be leading this rally today if it hadn't been for those early technical problems? Yeah, uh, uh, no, not leading, but closer to Richard because uh, okay, I was first on the road, so I, I think. I couldn't be leading, but uh, maybe 15 seconds. Tomorrow happen a lot of things because uh, every three cars sure is we have big fight tomorrow, and every car starting uh, almost same condition, and that is so nice. Like we said, there is a long way to go, and here's when you can catch exclusive same day coverage for days two and three of Rally New Zealand here on Speed. So then, a familiar story tonight. Peugeot have dominated the day, and it's now only two Peugeot drivers who can win the world title. Tomorrow's the rally's longest day, however, with another 10 stages, and the sport's shown time and time again that anything can and does happen. I'm John Roberts. Thanks for watching.